Okay, example two. Let's try the following differential equation. This is a differential equation which is exact. All right, I still haven't told you how to identify if it's an exact differential equation or not. Um, but but uh, hopefully after this example, we, we can have a reliable way of approaching the uh, exact differential equation. So you only know that this is an exact differential equation because I told you so, so far. Okay. Uh, you might be wondering this strange look of the differential equation. I have dx and dy separately. What is, where, what is, what is this? Where is this from? Well, this is just another way of writing down uh, the following. Above is equivalent to 2xy plus x squared minus 4y y prime equal to Now why is why are these two equal? Well just take the entire thing and divide by dx. Here, if you divide dx by dx, what would you get? One. So that goes away. Here, if you divide dy by dx, what do you get? Y prime. Y prime. So this is say exactly the same as this one. Okay? Now just to, to justify that we really have to solve this as an exact differential equation, let's see if this can be categorized as anything else. Now, if you solve this for y prime, it's going to look like negative 2xy over x squared minus 4y. Now, looking at this, is this a product of a function of x and function of y? No, it's not. There's no way you can rewrite the right side as a function of x times function of y. Therefore, it is not a exact. Not a. Therefore, it is not a separable equation. Okay. Anything that can be written as f of a function of x times another function of y equals y prime. That's a separable equation. Uh, in that case, you can just divide the function of y to the other side and solve. Okay. Um, another way to look at this is I see y prime here, and that's multiplied to y. So that means it is not first order linear. Okay. It's not first order linear because y is multiplied to y prime. If I didn't have this 4y, actually it's both. Okay, you can, if I didn't have this 4y, then you can think of this as both uh, first order linear and separable, and it's a lot easier to solve. But just having this negative 4y spoils everything. You can't solve it uh, by using any methods that you learned in the previous sections. Okay? So you need a totally different approach. All right. Now, let me show you another way to view this equation. Uh, somehow, in many, many cases, in many textbooks, uh, they explicitly write exact equations in this format. They, they like to write in this format. Now, why do they do that? Uh, the reason that they write, they try to write it this way it originates from the following, following reason. So, think about the following. If you had a function of f, and, and they both depend on x and y, and if x and y both depended on t, then in calculus three, you learn the, chain, the following chain rule. What is df dt? That is round f round x dx dt plus round f round y 
dy dt. Remember this chain rule? This one is probably the, the most popular chain rule, but there are more general chain rules. In fact, every time you have a, a dependence diagram like this, you can come up with the chain rule like this. The, the way you come up with the chain rule from this dependence diagram is, uh, think about the following. I want to know how this f changes with respect to the change of t. When you change the value of t, it's going to affect f in two different routes. The first way is t, change in t will bring change in x, which will bring change in f. How do you measure this much change? Well, you multiply these two. This measures how much x changes when you change t. This measures how much f changes when you measure, uh, when you change x. So if you multiply these two, you get the change of f going through this route. But that doesn't measure the entire change in f brought by t, because there's another way change of t can affect f, right? And this, this is change of f when you change y. And you multiply to how much y will change when you change t. If you multiply these two, it calculates how much f will change going through this, this route. And the wonderful thing uh, it, it, that you learn in calculus 3, or multivariable calculus, is that if you want the total change of f brought by change of t, you just have to add this and that. These two added together gives you the total change. That's what you learned in Calc 3, okay? I really don't have to explain all this, but uh, since the summer is long, I'm just trying to do a quick review, okay? Thanks. Hopefully that made sense, okay? Now, uh, you can take this and just multiply it by dt both sides and get the following form of an equation. I'm going to rewrite this as f sub x, which means the same thing as f partial derivative with respect to x, okay? And this one is dx because I'm multiplying by dt, so I multiply by dt, so dt's are all gone. And uh, this is f sub y and dy. So if you take this chain rule and you write it like this, uh, there's a name for such a thing. This is called the total derivative of f. This is called the total derivative of f. It's like, uh, but, it, but they are also almost saying the same thing. If you want to see how much f changes, you multi uh, multiply to how x changed to uh, partial with respect to x, how y changed it times the partial with respect to y. You add adding these two together will give you how much f changes. That's what this is saying. Okay. All right. Then you can take the above form and compare it to the right side, and that's kind of really convenient, right? Uh, uh, I mean, it, it, once you write it in this form, then you can naturally think, oh, what's in front of dx? The one that's obtained by partial with respect to x. What's in front of dy? The one that's obtained by partial with respect to dy. OK? So that, that's how you can understand it. And, and for this reason, a lot of textbooks would write exact equation in this form. Okay? Now, what I'm not telling you is that I don't need to say that anything that looks like this is always exact. Okay? Uh, and uh, that's another thing that you, you actually learn in calculus 3. If somebody claims that this is a partial with respect to x and this is a partial with respect to y, how would you verify his claim? There was a, a test for exactness, right? So let's talk about the test for exactness. It works like the following. I know that f x y and f y x are the same. The same. You learn this as the fact that second partials commute. Okay? If you differentiate a single function by x and then y, you get the same thing if you differentiate first by y and then x. The partial derivatives commute. Okay? 
So if what I'm claiming is really true, if, I, if, if it's really true that this, this equation is from a single function f, then because of this property, if I take this and differentiate the If I take this and differentiate by x, and if I take this and differentiate by y, they should be equal, right? Maybe I should repeat this. What am I claiming this is? f subscript x. What am I claiming this is? So to get f x y, what should I do? I take this and differentiate by y, right? So if I take this, if I take 2xy and differentiate by y, that's 2x, what is this? f sub xy. Isn't that right? Because I took fx and differentiated by y, so it's fxy. OK, what about this one? If I take x squared minus 4y and differentiate by x, I get 2x. See, this is a partial der derivative, so you consider y as a constant. So if you differentiate negative 4y, that goes away. x squared differentiates to 2x. And that is what? f sub? yx. Yeah. yeah. f sub yx. Are they equal? Yes. Yes. So uh, there's a theorem of Poincaré which tells us that if, if indeed, uh, if this test does work out, then it does come from a single function. That's the theorem of Poincaré. Uh, so this is called the test for exactness. Whenever you see a question that says, verify that the following differential equation is exact, this is what they want you to do. Okay. All right. But this, is, this doesn't yet solve the question. It just verifies that we can use the, the previous uh, method for solving such a thing. <coughs> OK. Now, to actually get f, what should we do? We take 2xy and integrate by what? What was this? fx, right? Yeah. So you have to integrate by dx. If you integrate 2x, you get x squared. x squared. y is just a constant multiple, so that's what you get. Plus a function of y. OK. Now let's take the second one, x squared minus 4y. Now this is f sub y. y. So you dip, integrate by y. y. And x squared, when you integrate by y, you get? x squared y. x squared y. Negative 4y, you integrate by y, you get? Negative 2y two two squared. squared plus the function of? x. x. Try to harmonize the two different descriptions of f. What's your conclusion? f must be? x squared y minus x squared y. y. Squared minus 2y squared. This, this must be this one, and this doesn't have anything here. So we can take gx to be 0 and fy to be negative 2y squared. Then these two agree exactly. So the two different description of a single function agrees completely if we take f equals x squared y minus 2y squared. Therefore, what is the answer? x squared y minus 2y squared equal to 0. Which means c. Oh, c. Okay. Let's see this up. Thank you very much. Yeah. C. Okay. So let's do a recap. I was uh, explaining what was going on while solving this, but if we do a recap, it, it'll be much easier for you to understand what's going on. So first of all, when you're given the following differential equation, just remember that always the one in front of dx is what? f sub x. The one in front of dy is f sub y. Okay? That's what, at least that's what the claim is. Okay? How do you verify that claim? 
you do the test for exactness, okay? If it asks you test for exactness of this equation or verify that this differential equation is exact, what do you do? You use this property that the partials commute. So you take fx and differentiate by y, fy and differentiate by x. Make sure that they give you the same exact thing, 2x and 2x. If they agree, then you know it's exact. Then you proceed to solve it by undoing the partials. If it's differentiated by x, integrate by x. If it's differentiated by y, integrate by y. You get something. Okay. Uh, here, another uh, thing to be careful that is that uh, because you're undoing the partial derivative, it's, no, it's not a constant that you put in, uh, anymore. It's actually a function of y or a function of x, depending uh, which one you're undoing. Okay. So you, know, you put fy if you're integrating by dx. You put gx if you're integrating by y. And then you can harmonize the two accounts to give you the final, uh, final answer. Okay. That's how you solve this exact differential.